gon' chew me, cause the showtime. Go ahead and call the gang up for the one time. Rap food rhymes, got them on the line. And my life's still great, I'm doing just fine. Hands up. So Best Buy has begun removing all physical media and displays out of the stores. So a few facts on this before we get into the discussion. So Best Buy will phase out sales of DVDs and Blu-rays discs in both store and online in early 2024. The company will continue to sell video games. Um, I got this article from Variety. A Best Buy spokesperson said, to state the obvious, the way we watch movies and TV shows is much different today than it was decades ago. Making this yeah. change gives us more space and opportunity to bring customers new and innovative tech for them to explore, discover, and enjoy. So the hot takes I have to this is with everything moving to digital, we got Best Buy removing physical media out the stores. We had the issue with Sony, um, December 2023, where people had bought stuff on the Discovery platform. And due to licensing issues, Sony had put out a message that they were going to have to remove it, even though they purchased it. And um, just getting a little bit into the Ubisoft executive that said that gamers need to get comfortable with not owning their games for game subscriptions to take off. is digital media anti-consumer yes simple answer yes and the only reason why it is anti-consumer is because corporations can take it back i'm not yep. just going to be on no extreme political anti-corporation big company all that good stuff that's not what this channel was for but i don't like that we can't own anything anymore you and, know what i mean like this that was my that was my sentiment like the stuff behind me, I paid for this. Fairy tale Hiromashima could get in legal troubles. Fairy tale could get sued by freaking Comcast. They name any random company, and now they're like, "We got to retrieve all of the stock that's currently in stores." But you can't take my manga. Mm -hmm. You can't take my Funko Pops. I bought it. I have it. I own it. It's mine. But you know what I'm saying? I agree, and I think we're just. I agree because of the fact that. And I was seeing this with, I was, coincidentally enough, I was talking to one of my coworkers who was, who has a Mac subscription and was using mm -hmm. his Mac subscription to catch up with the new 52 DC movies. And he was like, he got to a point where some of the movies weren't on Max and they were on Netflix. Mm. So with, and I would agree with you that digital media is anti-consumer because we are at the mercy of the subscription service, whether it's licensing issues or the fact that they just don't want to have this content on their platform anymore, that we could watch a movie one day and wake up the next day and that movie's not there anymore. Yeah. We had the same conversation during the Hunger Games review where I was able to watch the whole Hunger Games, the first four movies on Hulu. You tried to go catch up you got to pay or rent to watch the movie because it's no longer yeah. on Hulu. And, and that's my thing because it's like another thing is that we're losing the option to own it because yep. like there was one game, I think it just got announced either from Xbox or Sony and the developer said, this is the first game we're not dropping any physical formats for, no disc. So that means if that developer gets sued, legal troubles, whatever, and Microsoft and Sony say we're pulling it off our online stores. You didn't even have the option to own that game. Because if you download it, what's the you run the risk of, oh, okay, I downloaded it to my console, my console plugged into the internet. If they send out a code that says we're retrieving all of this, it's retrieved, it's gone. Yeah. So now you're now consumers are gonna have to jump through hoops and ladders to find ways to even store their digital content. Well, like we're gonna have to get back to putting everything on jump drives and hard drives every day. Yeah. Now, the, the Ubisoft executive, his point on it, and I think he just said it in a way that triggered a lot of video game owners, because he was describing the difference between how we see DVD, it, like movie media, versus how we see video game media. And there's a difference. I, I, and I think I agree with him. Like We have a different attitude of owning movies than we do owning video games like you said this on a previous podcast you like buying the disc because when you complete the game it looks like a trophy 
Exactly. But do you have that same opinion when you're watching a movie on Hulu and then the next day comes around and you can't watch it on Hulu anymore? Not necessarily, but I did. I will say this. My mom used to own a DVD collection and I did used to be able to like looking up there, see the start, this old school Spider-Man movies lined up and knowing that if I want to do a random movie night, because back then streaming wasn't big. If I wanted to pull it off the date, the, 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 um, Shelf, put in my DVD VCR player. Some of y'all Gen Zs and younger may not know what a VCR player is that had the DVD <laughs> player next to it connected. Old school. That you DVD put it in. VCR combo. Yeah. It had the white and red, ye- yellow prongs in the front, the high definition red, blue, and green ones in the back. Yeah. They were fire. But no, nah, I used to like that I could just do movie night. Video games, I like that too. But video game fans, we've been com- we've complained. They got it now where some games you can't play unless you connect it online. Y'all got mad at Xbox for that 10 years ago. But that's all I'm saying, though, is that I, me personally, because my dad had a DVD collection, too. He had a VCR collection as well. But when we got into streaming, I didn't have as much of an attitude where I couldn't watch something on Netflix anymore. As Mm. if I had to buy, as, as opposed, if somebody told me that, you can't buy any of any of your video games off the shelf anymore. You have to buy it digitally. I think as a society, we have a different attitude. See, my whole thing is, and now my cat's featured in the episode. My whole thing is, I like still having a choice. Because the thing about DVDs, this is another thing. I ain't heard... Sorry for the bad English. I ain't heard MGM Studios or any of them <laughs> say, we're going to stop producing Blu-ray DVDs. It seems like gaming is on going that route. I've never heard of a DVD putting a DVD in my um but Xbox I, or PlayStation. They saying you got to be connected online to watch it. Video games are going that route. But I would say this though. Um I think Max tried it and I feel like we're going that way anyway is that when we wait for movies, like we wait for the movies to come out in theaters, I'm seeing less announcements of movies being available on Blu-ray and more announcements of this movie is going to be available on digital on this day. Like this is our new coming soon to DVD and VHS. Oh, it's dropping on digital. And then you have to wait for that additional announcement for, oh, now it's on the streaming service. Now it's on Disney Plus. Now it's on Max. Now it's on HBO. But the one thing I'll say is that industry, one thing you will always have, you will still be able to rent rent and watch it on Amazon. Because almost every single movie that is on Max or Hulu, even if they are like contract, contract expires and you can't um, watch anymore because say Harry Potter, like when Harry Potter used to move from Max to, to uh, from Cinemax to HBO mm-hmm. and all that when they were separated all the time, on Amazon for a majority of movies, it still offers, offers you the opportunity to rent this movie but, for eight ninety nine. But then, But then let's get into the licensing because you are, you are exactly correct. If I went on my fire stick right now, because I've bought movies on Amazon mm-hmm. because I always want to have access to this movie. Exactly. But if Amazon loses the licensing, for that movie, we run into the same issue that we did with Sony. The issue that happened with Sony and Discovery is because they did not want to renew the licensing with Warner Brothers for that content. And I want to know, is that going to happen to movies with, like, video games? Is that happening? Like, I just haven't... Maybe I'm just not in those circles on my social media, but is that happening? Like, with a, in the Amazon route? Because HBO and all I, of them, because it's only streaming, I get it, but, like, has anybody said, like, oh, when I buy a movie from Amazon, Amazon has snatched it away because of, like, legal stuff? I haven't heard anything yet. Because that I'm just saying but that I, shouldn't be the option. You know what I, I mean? I could also see it as... I could also see it as is that Amazon's catalog, unless you're out there buying stuff from Amazon, their catalog is not as big as, like, Netflix or Hulu or Disney Plus, for example. So maybe they have the leeway to like make those negotiations instead of Netflix, right. which is trying to have Warner Brothers stuff on here, Disney stuff on here from time to time, and all of these, along with their original stuff, as well as these other streaming services that sometimes it, if we want to go the business route, you, sometimes you have to look at the cost. 
see, but I think, antique... but, but this is my other thing about Amazon. Out of all of the, if we just want to look at Amazon Prime, out of all of the businesses that Amazon has, Amazon Prime is like at the bottom of like stuff that I feel like Amazon cares about as far as their Prime business. video, uh, yeah. right? So like. But Netflix, and we've talked, we talked about this last year with them doing like the password crackdown, the subscription increases, like that is their in- their income to trying to keep these shows on the network. And if the people that they are like, they're, you know, that are giving them this content are raising their prices and they can't pay it, f- pay for it no more, then it's gone. But here, here is the key difference. When you make that purchase with Netflix, Hulu, and HBO Max, you are paying for a subscription. You're paying to rent. You're paying to lease. When I get on Sony online store, Microsoft online store, Nintendo online store, I'm buying those games to own. Mm-hmm. Amazon gives you the choice but, to buy or but own. If, but, hope- if, but if, because this is what the, the Ubisoft guy was saying, if if they switch the video game market into a subscription service like thing, then it turns into the same thing of Netflix and HBO Max and Hulu. But that's my thing. If I know that and it's there, I'm talking about the times where you like, cause the real issue is with that Sony scenario, mm-hmm. people purchase that game to own. It was taken away. If I know that I'm purchasing game pass to rent these games, and then some games come in and out. I was told that as a consumer, I made an obvious choice. Okay. But the second thing I'll be mad about is if I lose my choices. If now, if Ubisoft says we're going into where everything is on the subscription, we've had those arguments years ago with e- at E3 and everything else. We already said we hate it. But okay, at least I know that I'm paying for a subscription. Don't confuse me and have me thinking I'm paying our own. And then you snatch the game out of my game library. And that's the issue of digital content because it seems like that's always an option. And it's not being, inf- and consumers aren't being told that. Because no, nobody had to tell me that, oh, even though you bought this manga, someone might take it away because that's just not how it is. Mm-hmm. But now there's you run the risk of like, if I buy something online, buying it to own. That's what y'all told me. I'm purchasing it to own. It's not a rent. It's not a subscription fee. Y'all can still take it? When did that happen? Where is that in the terms of use? That's trash. Yeah. And and when you eliminate physical media, and then you also say we're all switching to subscriptions, it's like, okay, now we're just going to remove your opportunity to buy. That sucks, but that's a different argument. I'm talking about when we do have the opportunity to buy and y'all treating it like we're renting it. I want to say... What if that's just the move that you're trying to make anyway? I still, then that goes to the other argument. I'm still upset about it. <laughs> I'm still upset about, I'm still upset about it because I missed my physical media. Because I just, because the, Ubis, the, the Ubisoft executive's comment was specifically towards subscription services for video games. Mm-hmm. That we have to shift the mindset of every game that we buy, we're buying it to own to having the mindset of what we have for like Netflix and Hulu is that we are accepting the risk that the content that we consume today is not the content we'll be able to consume tomorrow. Well, if you do that, the prices need to reflect it. Game Pass, yeah. I don't own anything that I can play through Game Pass, but Game Pass is like $10 a month. So now if you t- if you if Ubisoft comes out here and they're saying here go Assassin's Creed Red seventy dollars, but we can take it from you whenever we feel like it, or yeah. you still got to ask for it. I would agree. I would agree with that. Gotta- the business model has to change. If that's if you if you want gamers to shift their mindset to have the same mindset that we have with these entertainment streaming services, you have to change the business model. Cause Mark, cause here's the thing. And this is why I appreciate a company like Microsoft being the lead for Xbox. Xbox was trying to do this way back with the Xbox One. When they unlocked unlocked that DRM stuff, and folks was like, what you mean my console got to be always online? I remember when that happened when I was in high school. Then we get into college and post-college years, so like four or eight years later, 
now almost half these games coming out. Oh, you cannot play this game unless it's all unless you're connected to the internet. Mm-hmm. It is a single player game. What yeah. are you talking about? I got to be connected to the internet to play this game. I bought it. I purchased a single player game, and it becomes misleading. Yeah. They need to be upfront with their consumers, and the subscription models need to reflect that Game Pass is not a full video game. It does not cost a full video game every month to be on Game Pass, and that's okay because I'm not paying for a full video game. I'm paying to access them temporarily as long as it's um available. I I agree, I agree. I think if they do make this move, then it needs to be laid out to the consumers of like what they can do, what they can't do, and you know, if if the content is mis- meant to be temporary. All parties need to understand that this content is meant to be temporary. Mm-hmm. And it maybe maybe I'm just an old dude too. Maybe maybe I'm looking at this the same way that you know thirty year olds from when we was like teenagers looked at VCR and everything. Mm-hmm. Like maybe it's just a part of the times, but I don't like the idea of losing the ability to own. Yeah, because when you lose the ability to own anything, you're at the mercy of the people who create it. Exactly. I I don't I think they're just making it harder. I don't think it's phasing out, yes, but I guess I would say let's not panic and be like physical media is going to go away tomorrow, but I think they're going to mm-hmm. make it very hard to get the physical media. As well, yeah. you know, we don't got video renting stores no more. So after video rentals went out the way, then it was go to Best Buy, go to Walmart, go to Target. Now they haven't said anything about Walmart or Target losing their physical media collections, but Best Buy was like the biggest one when when it came to movies, music, and video games alone. It was the one stop shop. So yeah, and. Honestly, honestly, it's just a lot because now it's going to get to the point where, like, if everything just switches to digital and the prices don't adjust, like, we got to take into consideration when you buy six, because now games are six nine ninety nine. Remember when they were fifty nine ninety nine? Remember when and before they were that forty nine ninety nine? Yeah, I re- I remember all of that, right? <laughs> but what's going to happen is, like, it happens till this day. I buy a game on the Xbox store like Baldur's Gate. Mm-hmm. It's still charging me six nine ninety nine, seventy two dollars with tax and all that. And I had to ask myself, no case. I thought the original. No I thought. I thought the original price of video games included the cost of getting a disc, a console, and an instruction manual. I thought that was included. Man, they do they even put? They do put instruction manual. I would say hmm, it just I, slips at this point. Most of them don't even have an issue. That's what I was about to say. If we want to talk about the little booklets that come with the games, they not really even worth looking at no more. True. I think I but, have opened the game that didn't even have the booklet. It was just a disc. I think it's a few of them now. I think half the time now, if they do have some paper in there, it's because it was a pre order code or like deluxe edition codes, like Spider Man and stuff. Yeah. Or like if you want to get the unlock the suits or mm-hmm. get like this this dlc mission or something put this code in yep you're correct and that's and and here's the thing i just don't want another layer of consumers to fall for the hype because you know what the games are going to do it's like what apple did when they got rid of their chargers we're doing it for the ecosystem because we don't want to put trash out there does it benefit the ecosystem? Yes. But are y'all doing it for that? No. Y'all doing it to save money and make as much profit as y'all can off of us. That's the real truth. Yeah. That's the real truth. Does it benefit? Yes. No littering. Cool. Nobody's mad at that. But don't lie. I think, because I want to move on to the next thing, but I think I agree with you for the end of this discussion. Wherever the digital media market goes, I think everybody needs to be clear and everybody needs to understand how permanent or non-permanent this digital media is Mm -hmm. on our consoles, on our TVs, on our phones, et cetera. Because I think with streaming services, like, yeah, we get pissed that we can't watch something on Hulu anymore, but I think we've just gone accustomed to the fact that 
you know, hop to the next streaming service. Oh, it's on here. Okay. But I, I think the attitude is real different when it comes to video games. It's real yeah. different. But moving on to the next thing, um, just a few announcements. Let's just talk about Winnie the Pooh. Other than that Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey movie, what has anybody else done with Winnie the Pooh being in public domain? And that's and here's my thing. Here is my argument. I wish people would just be creative and make new stuff. 